Hey guys, welcome to another time-lapse commentary. So, today we'll be looking at the picture below. This is the third one I've drawn recently. Um, oh yeah, this this time-lapse commentary is probably going to go up a little bit later compared to when I posted the image, so... It's been a few days or so. Not sure exactly how long, but... Uh, yeah, wanted to run through this time-lapse because this is the first proper one I've recorded this year. Um, so yeah, uh, this was actually probably my favorite to work on, despite how much trouble it gave me. Uh, but I just, I kind of like the final product quite a bit, so yeah. Um, it's also another one where I'm trying out the five toe design, as you can see. Um, but Anyway, without further ado, uh, the time lapse itself is about two hours long. We're going to be moving at 4x speed, so it's loaded up in a video editor right now, so I can play it at that speed. Um, and let's, uh, uh oh, where is it? Okay, let's, uh, get to that. Get it rolling. Um, so yeah, I also, maybe I'll pull up the, uh, Get that up here. Or notes. Yeah, I just want to pull this up. This uh, final version down in the corner. Okay. So yeah, uh, start out just kind of a torso. So this one was kind of. Um, I wasn't even planning on working on any art when I drew this. I just really felt like I needed to make something. So. That's what happened. Um, you just felt some inspiration probably viewing other people's art. and like, you know what? I've been trying to make the last picture. I've tried way too complex pose and whatever. Let me just scale it back, do something simple, and then just like play around the background a bit. Um, and also give me an opportunity to just try and draw the you know, five toe paws a bit more, get a little more experience, which proved to be more challenging than I anticipated. Uh, but yeah, as you see here, I'm just kind of, I'm getting a little more sketchy than maybe just construction layer, but it's, the intention is just construction put, construction layer. To, well, okay, no, it's, it's a sketch at this point. Maybe I started with the intention of construction, but I'm doing the thing where I <laughs> erase and then sketch and you go know, back and forth, which I probably shouldn't do. I probably should be splitting those between two different layers, but I just, the problem with the anatomy started earlier, though. Like, even here, I'm like, wait, why am I having trouble getting the hips and waistline to look right? I don't know. I don't know why that was giving me so much issue. I think I may have just gotten in my own head a little bit about it. I don't know. I mean, I fix it later, but it's it's weird. It's it's very basic anatomy. It's just standing. But I was trying to get a very specific sort of, like, pose appearance, I think. Like, I mean, I got there in the end. So, I guess I can't be too upset, but... Yeah, like Luca's too tall here. I gotta gotta fix his legs to actually be closer to the proportions he's supposed to be. His head is also off a bit too. It's too big. So I gotta fix that. And yeah, so that's. If I recall correctly, that's where I, uh, yes, I start working on the lines here. Because this is, this is a much looser, uh, picture than the other two. I'm, I'm not worried about line weight so much. I'm not trying to get all the lines perfect. I was just very much drawing for the fun of it. Um, drawing to enjoy myself. Closer to the first picture, um, what did I call that one? Hang loose. First one of this year. Um, similar sort of vibe. Although that one I, I planned to do, but it's kind of fell into a rhythm of having fun with it. 
but you know I went I did better detail work so yeah this one is definitely probably the uh if you if you look at it in close in depth you'll realize that I rushed it more it only took two hours whereas I think probably took three hours in the other two pictures or so um two hours isn't really not really rushing it for me I could do one of these in one hour but it would be even sloppier I would do I would basically skip all of the cleanup to do that and I wouldn't put in as much details into clothing and stuff like a good chunk of the time spent on this one was the fact that I decided to draw a car on the chest and also the amount of time I spent trying to get the legs right like this probably would have been like a one hour if it wasn't a combination of those two things Getting some finer details in the sketch probably would have made the lines better as well. Because right now the this, this sketch is kind of an amalgamation between a construction layer and a sketch. It's not giving you as much detail to base the lines off of, so the lines are end up a little sketchy. But honestly, maybe that's not a bad thing. I've had people tell me that they prefer my sketches, that they feel like they have more life in them. And I think that's generally true because... Sketchiness allows you to play around with line weight a little more than actual lines do. If they're if the actual lines aren't perfectly weighted, things feel off. Uh, and I'm certainly far from being perfect with line weight. Whereas, like, when you're doing sketchy stuff, it lets the the viewer imagine the correct line buried inside of that inside of the sketch better than if you try and render that line yourself. But, personally, I just, I'm not, I, I like the CRISPR lines. I like, also, the challenge of myself to try and render things closer to what is in my mind. And getting better over time. Anyway, now we get to me realizing one of the critical ways that I draw paws is that I usually draw the ball of the foot. And I'm like, oh crap. The fifth toe completely obscures that, doesn't it? How do I figure out how to place everything now and make it look natural? And the real answer is that I have to just kind of restart again, I think. Um, this is just a painful section. Even on 4x speed, we're going to take a while of just me just restarting over and over again and okay here I do a sketch even this sketch ends up uh, not doing it I end up having to pull way back check some references stuff to try and get a more a better feeling pose and like the better ratio of the size of paws to the rest of the body and whatnot. Whether I ended up at the, the perfect solution or not, I'm not sure about, but I'm pretty happy with it for what it is. I'm still figuring it out, though, you know? Like, I don't... I don't know... If I'm ever... If I'm even going to stick to the five-toe design, but I've, I want to... I want to give it its chance, you know? I want to... Render it the way that I'm sort of imagining and seeing if, if I feel happy that way or if I want to go back to four toes or do something else. But, like, I want it to work because I, I want the more realism. And I, if it's a challenge to me, then that's interesting. Like, I want to make it work. And I think I can because I think, I think it's the right, the correct choice, ultimately, because it is more accurate to how Luca would be it makes sense and that satisfies some part of my brain even though we're talking about a uh, anthropomorphic blue otter who cares if this imaginary creature that is me has four toes like a big cat instead of five toes like an otter but I care you know so yeah I've, I've chosen to care about it, and so here we are. Whether that 
hurts me in the long run, I don't know. And I don't really care either, because uh, at a certain point, you have to just let yourself pursue the things that you want as an artist, because that's, that's just how I've always been. Not even at a certain point, that's just the way I operate. And it's probably partly why I'm so unpopular. That and also the anxiety. The anxiety is the bigger part. I can't I can't start scapegoating other things when it's on me. I mean either I guess both in both those cases it's on me, but whatever. No one wants to hear me complain. Is this the final? No, this isn't the final. Is it? No. Oh. Yeah, I scrap all of this. Man, I should just skip... Scrub ahead here. Let's see. Where was I? I was... I was doing all this, right? Yeah, and then... Unhappy with it, keep redoing it, blah, blah, blah. Um, okay, so here I'm sketching out the leg again, being like, okay, I, the leg position is throwing me off because it's not even really the position I want. A little, it's a little boring just have the, the feet splayed different, two different directions, like, okay, cool, whatever. I kind of wanted the whole body to be turned a little bit, and having that leg point the other way is... A little off from that anyways and so this is the actual position of the leg that felt right after some trial and error I I got there um I feel like is the foot on the right the one I f went with in the end I'm not I might mm, I guess we'll see I don't know why perspective is messing with me. Yeah. That's definitely was the case. I don't know entirely why, because it's, it's again, it's such a basic thing. I think it wouldn't be that big of a deal. Yeah, okay, now I'm getting the angle. Right. Yeah, okay. I do change things around again. Okay. So yeah, that's the long, arduous, painful pro even process of trying to get the paws to look right, and even still, at least the paw on the right, my Luca's left foot, still doesn't seem quite right to me in the final picture, but I am willing to look past it. I actually think I did a pretty good job on the left paw, though. Or that, well, the paw on the left, Luca's right paw. I think that one actually came out pretty well. Trying to get the tail right. Okay. I opted not to do a tail bag in this picture. I don't entirely know why, because I've been doing tail bags pretty consistently the last several. I guess it. I felt like it broke up the uh, form a bit too much for what I was going for. I don't know. See, that's the, that's the thing, like, the the fifth toe covering up this, view, like, the point of view on the ball of the foot is something I'm gonna, I'm, I gotta figure out how to do, because it still doesn't seem quite right, but it's, it's as good as it was gonna get in that moment. I think my one gripe is the claw placement that I ended up going with on the, on the right foot, the one on the left. 
think if I, I'd move some of the claws over a bit, and then it would be good. And maybe change the shape of the pinky toe a little. But whatever, it's fine. Serviceable at least. Basic little bandana tied around the tail. Cleaning up the expression a little bit because I felt the eye was a little too... And getting the smile a little bit better. And then slapping on the stripes real fast. Also, I added some ruffling to the fur because I think that was an effect that I was missing. Some of the other pictures lately, and I, I I do like it. Even if otters don't have particularly long fur. If they're dry, they get fluffy. If they're dry, and especially if, you know, they're cleaning, as I would presumably be taking care of myself as an otter and wouldn't need the waterproof coating in everyday life. Oh boy, Frank is here. Sorry if his meowing disturbs things. Did I go... AFK here? I don't even remember stepping away. Okay, that may have that must have just been a brief break. Okay. So here we go, trying to put a car on on my uh shirt here. It's vaguely supposed to be a uh challenger, but you know. It's whatever you want it to be, because I didn't really... I wasn't following a reference um, real closely or anything. I was just kind of... I googled, like, uh, 71 Challenger or something like that, and then just lanced a couple times, and then just kind of just doodled out a little design. So... I opted to make it a convertible as well, because that seemed more fitting to the whole synthwave thing I was going to go for. And then I also added some palm trees. So that's the antenna right there. I don't even know if the antenna is really even visible in the final picture that that were distinguishable from the palm trees at all. Doing the lines. Have I done a time lapse with a car yet? Maybe not. Not sure. I drew more cars when I was working on the comic more regularly, I think. So we'll see about comic time lapses in the future. That might be a thing that'll happen. Uh, cause especially because I think I might try doing some other parts of the story. Um, for more details on that, you can watch the GTA video whenever like this is uploaded relative to that. I'm not sure, but yeah. That one... Uh, the one, whatever, whichever one came out February 1st, because this is probably coming out later. Or maybe it isn't. Maybe I decided to post this January 31st. Who knows? Yeah, the, the antenna totally just blends in. Oh, well. That's fine. I want to do more of this, more of actually like taking some time to do a good design on the on the shirt instead of it just being plain cuz like it's such an opportunity to do something neat that I feel like I I squander. Like clothing offers a, a second canvas to play around with on top of your characters. And I I want to 
get more, get better at doing cool clothing and stuff. At least, cool clothing in my own mind. I've never been any sort of like person who follows fashion and stuff. I love the like synthwave aesthetic, but like, I can't tell you brands or any crap like that. I don't know what the what I'm talking about with stuff. I just make what I think looks cool and try to like buy clothing that looks cool in my own mind. Not super concerned about a uh, style or anything. I'm just a weird eccentric artist otter dude. All right, here comes the colors. Using my ref sheet as normal. Although, I probably need to make a ref sheet with like normal clothing colors that I use because I most always am using electric indigo or uh, yeah, electric indigo's color scheme for clothing on Aqua Tiger Luca, Aqua Tiger pattern Luca. Which I mean, it's fine because like. They are an extended version of the same palette, basically. That's why it works. Go to. Obviously, the clothing my PNG Trooper is wearing is an example of the alternative color palette, the green heavy one. That also, I think, works pretty well. More derived from Kieran, I suppose. And so, yeah, with the... And this was even before this update. Um, I had gone back and forth with whether I'd make the entire bottom of the foot skin or if I keep it just the pads. I'm sticking with the whole bottom of the foot being skin because that's just more true to otters. But it means that it actually changes the design kind of considerably in terms of... There's no... The underbelly fur color is gone from the foot. That does not appear anywhere on the foot now. Because previously, the bottom of the foot was that light color. Now it's all skin color. So I just thought that was an interesting thing to note. And an update I should probably do to the ref. I mean, I guess, I, I guess I'm due for another ref. Because I gotta change five toes anyways. And I gotta change the entire paws. It's different now. So here I am continuing to work on the shirt design. Doing something snazzy, I suppose. I don't know. I guess that's up to people's personal preferences, but I think I I think having a cool pattern for the shirt works in this image. Now I know making the same color palette from the clothing and the background maybe hurts my contrast here. But I like the aesthetic. I like how it all comes together. And maybe if the contrast isn't super high, so it's less engaging of an image and whatever, however else you want to metagame art. Don't really care. I don't want to have to think about how to catch people's eye and draw them in and bait more people to follow me. I just want to make stuff that looks good, you know? Or stuff that looks good to me. And I hope that other people appreciate it too and follow me for it. That's all I want. And I'll budget a little with the, uh, what is that tool called? Liquify tool, right? Well, we'll get, we'll get there after I finish designing the pants. Of which I think I'm, I think I'm gonna change the colors up a little bit before it's finalized. Here, right? No, I guess not. Maybe I already did that. This all happened so quickly. But yeah, here's the liquify tool. Making the design a little bit more interesting. Alright, is it background time now? Might be. Not certain. I might be there might be some other design that I'd forgotten here. 
Yeah. Okay, background time. A couple different layers to this background. And I didn't do it the way I've done it in the past. I, this is much more freehand than I have done for, like, um, you know, retro wave grid look. A lot of times I'll actually make something that's closer to a true grid using some of the tools in Clip Studio. But this time, I more freehanded it. Now, I did do a vec use a vector tool to draw the lines. Um, besides that one, that one was freehanded. But the others, I... Oh, no, I don't even think that's... Yeah, that's not the line I go with, yeah. That one might be. Yeah, it is. Adding mountains in. Why is that there? Whoops. Okay. I know why that's there, because I'm capturing the whole screen. I'm not... Oh, God. I minimized it. Okay, there. That's not gone anymore. <laughs> it's all good. I just can't fiddle with uh, Spotify. I would like to. Oh, well. Actually, I can. Haha, -ha. I did the thing I wanted to do. Right. Anyway. So, yeah, getting the work background in. Um, as you saw with the moon, retro wave moon thing. I just kind of made a circle and then took chunks out of it with the uh, selection tool. And here with these, the grid, this part of the grid, I just drew lines, copy pasted, and then uh, mesh transformed them after I've realized I can't use a free transform because I'm an idiot for trying. Um, mesh transform to get them the way I want them. And then I kind of... Uh, Freehanded the uh, with the tool, the line tool, getting the grid looking a little more grid like. Kind of picked just an arbitrary point to pull them all towards. They did not even use any of the grid tools to make it line up. But it took me a few tries to get it to look right. I had to find a an increment that felt good. And there it is. And then I think we do the reflection of the moon. Yep. Sun? Moon? I don't... Who cares? And then we take the mountain and we cut it out of that. Here we go. Erase the leftovers. Now we blur it. Fiddle with the other layers to get everything looking good. Make the ground look shiny. Two shines don't aren't on top of each other because then it just looks gross. And now we work on the sky itself. I did make sure to make sure, like, so none of the stars would appear in the gaps in the sun, because then that would just kind of be weird. Sun slash moon slash whatever. The circle. Big stripey circle. This is something that always irks me in art, is when people draw, like, an eclipsed moon, or, like, a moon that's, like, a crescent. And then you can see a star where it would, should, it would just be black, because the moon's still there, it's just not illuminated. Like that, that always irks me. And I've seen it, I've seen it in some like professional stuff. And like, what, what are you doing? And like, it's not stylized either. They like, just, I don't know. It's, it's always something that's, 
like bothered me. I'm not calling anyone out. I'm just saying it's, I've seen it in some some high level art that people should really know better. Yeah, now I'm working on gradients. That's always the, the that extra little oomph. They really pull together a background or pull together a full image. Just dropping a gradient overlay, a gradient screen or whatever I ended up going with there. I think it was soft light, like blue to yellow. Now we're doing some quick shading. The lighting is interesting on this one because I'm illuminating from behind and below. It's not usually the direct directions of light for a picture, so. Oh, I hope I did a good job with this. I'm barely happy with the lighting. I mean, it's a little harsh on the, the rim lighting, but I mean, it's kind of the style I was going for. I tried not to let the, let the shading and stuff get too blown out, but I wanted to make the, the lighting feel a bit harsh, as if the ground is glowing and, you know, I'm standing directly in front of a, a bright light source, presumably. Felt right to me. Adding some extra lighting here now, after I did my normal lighting, shading, blur combination layers. I'm just, I've started doing this more to try and like really put the final polish on the lighting. Just the next level to elevate it is just, you know, just last a little bit here and there to, to balance the levels out and bring attention to the parts of the image I want to bring attention to. That and also getting a little more aggressive with like backlighting and stuff, like shading and glow from that, which I feel like it's easier to get away with in these these sort of stylized, non-realistic pictures. I think that's I'm obviously just going to be doing more of these. I think maybe I'll try and do more like nature scenes and stuff, but I just I just kind of want to have fun of stuff, you know. Fiddling with gradients again for the final touches on the picture. And uh, I think I'm just about there, right? I think I'm, I'm playing around with the gradients here, but I'm about to dial in on where I leave it, I think. Yeah. There it is. All right. Let's uh, get this pulled back up. That's correct. Um, and hide you. Is that proper? Hey, oh, why are there two of them? You know what? I don't know. That's the wrong one to hide. Okay, there we go. All right. Well, that's glow. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Now, as a final reminder, not, um, you know, final, I'm not I'm never going to stop reminding people at the end of these videos, although I did forget last time. I am open for commissions. So, especially for otters, kind of specialty, I can do the Forto stuff, don't worry, I'm not going to enforce certain styles and everyone besides, like, what is generally my style. Um, but yeah. Not exclusively otters. I'm just open for commissions. So if you want to see your idea rendered in my art style and and pay for it, I am open. But yeah. If you want to get a hold of me for that, try my email address, machetetgray at gmail.com. Um, or you can DM me on Discord maybe telegram not sure i mean honestly email is probably the most reliable just because i like how 
my, my past commissions email seems to have just been the easiest because I can transfer you the file more easily and all that. Um, I guess I can do that on, on Discord too. I don't know. Whatever. Point is, I'm open for commissions. Um, any details you need to get a hold of me are in my link tree, which will be in the description. It'll be link tree, Luke of the Yacht. Um, look for that link, click that, and it'll give you a list of all the different sites and way to con ways to contact me and whatnot. Um, find my email, find whatever you want. You can also follow me on Blue Sky. You can follow me on Twitter, but I'm probably not going to be posting much there because I kind of want that site to die and it isn't dead yet, which annoys me. Um, I also post everything on Reddit as well. Uh, and for affinity. So those are also active sites. I know I have a lot of sites on that link tree. Not all of them are super active, but I tried to order them based off of what importance. Granted, it's been a minute since I ordered them. So maybe, maybe Twitter's ranked too high. I don't know. But, um, in any case, uh, yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I think there is a Kofi link in that to if you wanted to throw some money my way if you don't have a commission in mind but still want to support me, that's welcome. I'm obviously not going to push anyone to do that, but it's there. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Later.